Hello and good evening and welcome to 7th session of our uh, abdominal anatomy. Now see today's topic that is the male external genital organs. What we'll try to do, let's see as such we can take it like that straight away we start with the organs and we start their description then the arterial supply, blood supply etc. Instead of that, what I thought is that sometimes say that question comes when we were studying hernia, there were few male emails and uh, it was asked that say how is it so that kidneys they are because it will come in, into our explanation later on but kidneys ascent and test is decent. Why is it so? Right? Now this question is like because at the end of our today's session when we'll be talking about undescended testes that is those testes which are which fail to come down to the scrotum and they remain into that entire path. So why should it occur? In order to answer so many such questions that what we'll be doing is we'll start with a very basic embryology and 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 we'll we'll do it in such a way that we'll start with the absolute beginning that is when the sperm and oocyte meet obviously we'll be going bit fast right so that quickly we'll go to the blastula stage then to two germ layer to three germ layer and so that there is no doubt about it that from where this mesonephric duct comes from where this say paramesonephric duct comes right so that question it it always remains we'll settle those questions and then you will automatically get the answer that why kidneys ascent and testis descent. Why it happens that in case of males, it is the mesonephric duct which is involved and in case of females, it is the paramesonephric duct which is involved. Right? So that way, in the first portion, that is what we will try to clear. Another thing, one of the male was that when shall we start watching the real images, right? real dissected images. Just hang on for one or two days, very soon we will be covering, coming with that. right? Because in that I wish to take the peritoneum first, the, all the reflections. And, and for that we need to understand that entire orientation, that how the peritoneum actually say rotates, how it folds upon itself. Right. So once we'll see that, then it will become much easier. It will be a pleasure to watch all those dissected things because it will make sense. Otherwise, we'll start cramming that, okay, when we remove anti-abdominal wall, this is greater momentum. So we say, it, oh, okay, it is greater momentum. We lift it, there is lesser momentum. Okay, it is lesser momentum. No, no, it's not like that. Right. There is a reason why it got reflected like that. So, so that we don't have to cram. Right. Same thing is for today. Then, obviously, the arterial supply, blood supply, veins, etc. We'll see. We'll also see one of the very important concepts that is the mechanism of erection, right? That how it is vascular as well as the nervous orchestra, right? When they both work together in a very proper way, that is where the process comes into existence. It is of utmost importance because when it will come to the female genital organs, again we will be discussing this part. And, and then there was a very long awaited lecture, right? I, I, I thought that yes, I will take that. It is, it is something like, say, I don't know whether, whether we should take it on YouTube or not, right? Because it becomes a stigma that uh, he is talking about such things. It is like, say, the responsibility as a male. What does that mean? See, it's like the physiology of male and female is completely different. Completely different, right? And it is very much necessary. It is, it is vital to understand for every male about the entire intimate relationship that what happens when the female is actually getting a pleasure because in both the cases the timings are completely different completely different and there is a completely different psychology based on it right so so it's like 
we'll see that because it would be like a one hour lecture i have taken this this uh, such session about 13 14 times but at times it was like a like in in front of audience but over here on youtube whether to take it or not i don't know right i don't mind right but still let me know right do send me a mail and uh, and we we can definitely say conduct that because it is so vital at times it happens like after years together you get the importance of it that okay it is so important right it is it is so vital anyway so let's start with our today's topic right this is male external genital organs uh anatomy physiology patho pharmac one day each right now it won't be possible right right now it won't be possible at this point of time because we need to finish the entire abdomen first right we need to first finish the entire abdomen it is a huge topic and if we'll try to do that mix and match trust me we'll deviate from the main topic we'll in fact deviate from our track right so so right now we'll be sticking on to, yeah we can that's what i said we can definitely take it on zoom i do have even a zoho account right which is more secure than zoom so i don't mind that right we can take it on zoho also uh so no worries all right right so rishi it is it's like at this point of time we won't be taking it like that that is one day anatomy then physiopath etc fine fine I, so just let me know right i don't mind i don't have any problem because i trust me at at some time sometimes there is so much of stigma associated with it that how can someone talk like that and and yes trust me in that session right i i won't be talking like or i won't be abusing something but at times it happens like people feel kare ye to mujhe bol rahe right how can he say like that right it comes to their ego but it is it is true it is true and and say putting it into very very blunt language right very blunt language sorry if i'm using such language but it is like for a male the entire pleasure is like this that's it this is the graph right for a female for a female it actually starts it actually starts like this and then then like this and and hardly anyone knows that it is not the end it is like this it is like this it is like this right there can be several spikes several spikes in fact they are not none of them are spikes they are like plateau for male it is like a spike but the timings they are completely different and that's the reason that by the time when male is has completed his process female has not yet even started and that leads to frustration it is like a severe frustration on the part of female and then in our society it happens that females they are like khali mein kich kich karti hai this that everything all sorts of those things right but this is the basic cause this is the basic cause so anyway right let's start with our today's topic ah uh, we are mentally we ha ha why not that's the reason say boss because you are medicos and and you know one thing this thing is not taught even in medical colleges i don't know why it has to be and it is very important but no it is not taught and and then at times it is said that which teacher will dare to te teach such things in front of all the students right it is necessary anyway uh yeah that's right it, it, though it is not part of your study right this is part of the life this is part of the life okay how many sessions minimum another will need one month and and surely say as i said that anatomy is foundation i am not trying to push the things faster we can we can just keep on finishing even bigger topics within 45 minutes but no i am not doing it because this weak foundation will reflect into your surgery and at that point there would be so many problems because you are right from the beginning 
with me so i i feel that it's okay one week here or there right if we if we make it fast we'll be finishing abdomen one week earlier but will that one week matter right with weak foundation so that's why i'm not trying to rush the things okay uh of physiology for first year mbbs yes 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 physiology uh just maybe slightly okay because say in this saturday sunday once again i started those palpitation and and there was some pain in that uh so as soon as i am fine trust me i'll start physiology parallelly right uh, and as per your convenient time just give me few days right I, i'll definitely start as early as possible so that you will feel the heat of teaching means physiology and, and anatomy when they both are going parallel then we'll add one more subject gradually right but i i'll need some time because that's what i feel i let you know all right all right chalo let's start with our today's topic right now one important thing that say there are two cavities right one is the pelvic cavity right one is the pelvic cavity now you'll find that almost all the organs all the genital organs they are into that except testis testis is kept outside into the scrotum into a bag which is having a temperature regulation right that's the reason that this testis will be traveling and then it should drop into the scrotum so that it successfully performs that spermatogenesis right this is one important point rest they all are into pelvic cavity and there is abdominal cavity right there is abdominal cavity and in abdominal cavity there would be all the git means most of the git there would be some into pelvic but most of the digestive contents they will be into the abdominal cavity today as we complete this this topic we shall be proceeding with the abdominal cavity part 1 part 2 part 3 and that way it will go so that we'll start with the complete details of peritoneum right sure sure definitely all right right so here it is our that in embryology right in embryology when we say so it is right from the first week to sixth week it is during this stage there is no sexual differentiation the word is differentiation that is one cannot make out whether this is male or female it is not possible right it is because at this point of time there is formation of one duct and that is what is called as the meso nephric nephric duct okay meso nephric duct remember this name will be coming into its detail within a minute but this meso nephric duct right it is also called as the wolfian duct right it is also called as wolfian duct now this duct it is a paired structure that means it is on right side as well as it is on the right, left side right right and left both this is present in male as well as female that's the reason that by 6 week it is not clear whether it is male or female baby it is the week 6 when things start getting differentiated right so here that is what is called as the sexual differentiation starts now how it starts we need to remember two structures one we talked about mesonephric we'll see how exactly this mesonephric duct forms right but then just near to this mesonephric duct matlab the mesonephric duct is like this it's like this and next to this there is one more duct that is called as paramesonephric simple it is called as paramesonephric 
and this para mesonephric duct para right which is also called as the mullerian duct right it is called as the mullerian duct this mullerian duct is responsible for all the female organs so fallopian tubes uterus upper one third of vagina etc all those structures right they are formed by the mullerian duct more when we'll be discussing the female genital system so right now we are not talking anything about paramiso you should just know this much as we said mesonephric is in present in male as well as female so once the sexual differentiation starts this mesonephric right the male portion that will vanish however today we'll be focusing only on only on this mesonephric right so this is also called as as we said wolfian duct right is also called as the wolfian duct and this is what will lead to all these structure now don't worry right if if it's like you are learning this topic for the first time like seminal vesicle epididymis ejaculatory duct don't worry everything will come right but this is just you should know these few important names that is epididymis and let's say ejaculatory duct right so these are like internal organs internal organs internal sex organs so that's this would be our focus for today all right so let's start with with the complete beginning right so here the sperm and the oocyte right they meet that leads to formation of ball of cells right and that's what is called as the blastula right how they unite then then 2 4 6 8 right they multiply right that thing we take it for granted because we quickly really want to reach to that mullerian from blastula right the cells differentiate so there would be two layers these two layers are like ectoderm and endoderm right then in between cells then these cells right they invaginate means that they this is this is like one layer right i am i am drawing very crude just to save time right so this is one layer and this is a second layer cells they start invaginating right like this and these cells they differentiate themselves differentiate themselves and thus we have got three layers right so we have got three layers these three layers they are ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm simple right so this is ecto meso and endoderm right it is this mesoderm in which we are very much interested that is what we shall be dealing with today right this outer is like you can see it forms the skin right this endo it forms the git it is this mesoderm which we are interested so so far it is okay now let's take a section right so we this is this is more or less like say <laughs> a, a, a burger actually it is like that right and this is a burger of ectoderm and endoderm right so this is ectoderm and this is endoderm right and in between there is a slice of mesoderm right so that's how it is there right this is mesoderm now if you want to go into the detail then it is this is like it is called as the amniotic sac right amniotic sac then this is yolk sac right okay so by by 17th and 18th day 17th to 18th day this stage is reached now starts the real game just focus that what really happens in next two days this is the 20th day and in 20th day this ectoderm right this ectoderm 
this one this ectoderm will start folding right it starts folding upon itself so how it folds now i'm drawing only the ectoderm right so just you have to think it like the rest of the structure remains as it is actually not right every structure would change but this is like for our understanding this ectoderm which is which is just like this right it becomes like this then it still folds upon itself and it becomes like this and then this thing is pinched pinched off it's trio and and it is pulled out the what what would be the final outcome the final outcome would be something like this it would be something like this say so this one sorry this one would be ectoderm this pinched one right this one yeah that becomes the neural tube right this becomes what's called as the neural tube again neural tube is not the topic for today but this is just for understanding this is what really happens and then surrounding it that mesoderm right that mesoderm which was just like that in between those two slices or, or those, those two <laughs> bulgars right this mesoderm it is like this then there is one portion and then the third portion right so and and as we said this is a structure which is which is paired on both the sides so let's give it name number one this is two this is three right what one is one right which is absolutely on the medial side so this is called as the paraxial paraxial all are mesoderm right all of them so i'm not writing again and again mesoderm right so all of them they are mesoderm only so this is paraxial paraxial will lead to formation of all the skeletal muscles right so skeletal muscles chalo that thing is done right what about two right changing the color so that we see it clearly because this is the area in which we are interested that's the thing for today this is intermediate mesoderm right it is intermediate mesoderm now this intermediate mesoderm it is what would lead to formation of kidneys why am i writing kidneys our topic is not kidneys our topic is testes yeah but it is that kidneys and testes kidneys they ascend testes they descend right it is like a crossover and that's the reason that why it happens like those why those testes should sit in scrotum then all the way from their epididymis and then those ducts would come right they will land and then there is all all those finally they will pass through the prostate and into the urethra why such a long path right this is the reason so that is the area right and finally this third one right this third one it is just called as the lateral plate lateral plate of mesoderm okay this is the area which we are interested in intermediate mesoderm now what we do this was just a slice right this was just a slice like slice right we were watching now we watch it like a bird's view so that we we are just watching the depth of it depth of that how this how this intermediate mesoderm is actually lying because say when we take a take a burger and we just cut it right so we are just watching that let's say in between there is alokitiki so we are just watching that alokitiki right we just watch this 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 cut section but if we really want to see that how that tiki looks like so what we have to do we have to remove the top portion of the burger we remove it and then you watch it from the top oh then you feel like acha that tiki is like this got it now that's what we are doing we are now removing the top portion and then we stand and then we watch from the top so it is like we remove the top portion 
and from this is from the top we are watching right so i'll draw it like we are watching from the top and when we watch from the top entire image everything changes now this is like it will keep on changing and and when we watch from the top then we find that this mesoderm is not as sidha sada as it looks like right it is not at all this mesoderm it starts like this right and say as we said that there are ducts so this is like let's draw this is what is called as mesonephric duct right there would be urogenital diaphragm and everything right that that's at a later stage just understand what now we are drawing is only mesoderm right so it is meso meso only this is mesoderm only right so we have removed the top burger we have removed bottom burger also we are just watching that alokitiki so that is in between when we watch from that now now this is in real time right things they keep on changing it is not so that what we are drawing it it will appear as it is it starts with some cells they go like this right now they are pronephros this is just the initial stage right this is the initial stage so they are called as the pronephros nephros nephros means to kidney nahi yes it is kidney we are dealing with the kidney so then where is where is testis it will come and it will come in a very smart way right so these are pronephros then these pronephros develop and then the whole thing starts developing down 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 so it is like here tissue right these cells are differentiate cells differentiate cells differentiate so that's how they come right that is what is called as the nephrogenic cord that is where the tissues are developing right yes this all all these exercises they are for kidneys right and and in between the testis testicular tissues will jump right so what happens that this pronephros they develop then starts further all of them these are the real real tissues which will be developing when they develop right they are called as the mesonephros right this is mesonephros mesonephros when the mesonephros develop right this pronephros they are now not needed they are they were just to initialize the process as such they don't take part into the formation so they disappear they disappear it happens on both the sides we are drawing it on only on one side right so it happens on both side this this structure this duct this is mesonephric duct as we talked about mesonephric duct right okay at at this stage this uh yeah what we are drawing this one that is called as nephrogenic cord right so when we'll be discussing kidneys at that point all these structures would come but at that point we'll be taking it bit fast because now at, at that stage you will be well comfortable with all all the formations so this is nephrogenic cord okay then the buds develop from here small buds develop right acha are they kidneys wait 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 right small buds develop who are they again they are called as meta nephric diverticulum diverticulum so who are they well they'll become kidneys in future are to then where is testis right okay hang on this is the caudal end this is the caudal end this is the cranial end head end this is tail end so that would lead to cloaca anal canal anal canal will form all right chalo that is also okay now comes that those tissues right those tissues let me go back slightly few tissues few germinal tissues they once again migrate right and they enter into 
they enter into the mesoderm and these are these are like they will migrate and then they will lead to formation of that's the testis that's the gonads right these are the gonads these are the gonads right so if i draw it on other page this would be for the complete clarity this is mesonephric duct on top of it you have got you have got mesonephric uh, mesonephros right and the nephrogenic duct and over here these are the gonads and over here it was that metanephric kidney right so we'll just draw like kidney over here this is k kidney and this is testis so from here things start like that these testes they will go down into the scrotum and these kidneys they will travel up right and that's the reason that this ureter this is this will become ureter right this is the area where the bladder would be formed right so this ureter would be pulled all the way up so that's the reason that kidneys they are so high and those ureters they are coming all the way down in fact it was other way around it was pulled up right it was pulled up so that's that's the journey right it is the ascent ascent of kidney kidneys and it was the descent descent of testes right that's the reason okay so this one is meso nephric duct right the rest you know all right so during so at birth right at birth it happens like this right they are like primitive testes right which will be going down and in between right say so they will be this is this is in fact before just before right at birth it, it will change i just want to draw one more figure and then we'll be proceeding okay because there is one more structure which i wanted to add these are seminal vesicle right there is one more structure which would be ascending so these are like so these are seminal vesicle these are the ves vessels you can say these are the vessels which will be storing which will be storing the sperms right and and this is like your mesonephric duct meso nephric duct yes yes that inguinal canal will come right this is about 10th week right still still the descent etc has not started these are like just primitive right these are like primitive testes primitive testes right very basic but these are the buds these buds right we can see these are the buds for seminal vesicle right these these they just shoot out of it and now these testes would descend right and they will descend in such a way that from this figure watch what happens at birth right so at birth the testes they are into scrotum then there would be a structure it is called as the epididymis right today we'll be watching all these structures in detail right in detail so it is like this this is just symbolic drawing right and then they took take turn go up go up right then there would be seminal vesicle over here seminal vesicle right this is what is called as the vas deferens which will be carrying the sperms right then 
over here there would be the prostate right all of them these are ejaculatory ducts ejaculatory ducts so they will be landing right they will be landing into the urethra right so seminal vesicle would contribute right and these these testes they have produced the sperms which have traveled all the way they will be entering into it and it is the prostate which will be adding this seminal fluid into it right so this is where the urethra has already started right and then that urethra will be carrying will be carrying the final fluid for the exit right so that's the urethra this is the difference this is the major difference it is like for the urination and the and the say for the reproduction it is the same organ in case of male in case of female both those those openings they both are separate right that's why it is considered that physiologically females they are at a higher level right so this is the prostate prostate all right right so this is how things will be forming okay so now let's understand that uh, what we shall actually be discussing for our today's topic right so for male external genitals right the penis then testes epididymis then there would be seminal vesicle we we won't be talking about the prostate because prostate is a big topic and it would be taken separately we won't be discussing actually the urethra because that is also a huge topic it will be taken separately and we'll also be talking about spermatic cord because it is spermatic cord which will be carrying these these structures plus plus the vessels right okay so let's start in case of male the penis is divided into two parts one part which is called as the root of penis right root and this root is fixed this root is fixed and the body body of the penis is free right the entire say this erectile tissue it starts actually from the root right so it is this erectile tissue right now this erectile tissue the structures which are responsible for it they are called as the corpus corpus right so they have got the capability to accumulate the blood right so there are in erect uh, in erectile tissue there are two say we consider it like one is crura right crura means which is on the sides so obviously there will be right side and left side so there are two second is the bulb right it means it would be in the center so it is one right this crura it is covered by one important muscle when we'll be discussing pelvis at that time this muscle would come again but right now we just remember that its name is ischio cavernous ischio cavernous muscle right as such there is one more important muscle pubococcygeus but yes so crura that is how it is covered now in this there is corpora cavernosa cavernosa remember these names these are bit cryptic names this is called as the corpora right because there are two otherwise it is also one is the corpus right this is corpora or you can say right corpus cavernosum left corpus cavernosum or corpora cavernosa putting in simple words this is such tissue which is normally loose but when the blood gushes into it it has got tremendous capacity to hold the blood when it holds the blood it leads to rigidity of the penis right the bulb 
the bulb, the central portion, right? We are coming to the picture, so it will be much more clear. clear. But when it comes to bulb, so over here also there is a tissue, but it is only one because it is into the center line, right? So it is called as the corpus, right? Corpus, spongiosum. Name itself is spongiosum, right? So again, it has got capacity to hold the blood, right? Okay. Now what really happens that as these structures they move, right, as these, these structures, so there would be say NPS, it would be like this, right, this is corpus spongiosum and over here on both the sides this would be corp corpus cavernosum, right, right and left right and left, right, on both the sides. See, here it is, right, the root part, right, which is fixed, which is fixed, and this one is the body, which is, which is free, fine, okay. The prepuce, that is the outer opening, right, opening, the gland span is, Uh, no, I didn't get PUBG mobile. Uh, the topic of breast that comes into thorax. That comes into thorax. No, I ha we have not eliminated it. In fact, it comes in thorax. We have not taken thorax. In thorax, there so many things are left out because we have not taken that topic. Okay, anyway, let's come back to our current topic. So, prepuce, the gland span is, this is the prepucial, prepucial sac. That is where the smegma, smegma means it is the collection, right? It is the collection because of all those sebaceous glands, right? Smegma because of sebaceous gland so that's why the, it is necessary for the hygiene purpose right to keep that thing clean yes yes we'll cover uh see see the thing is why are we deviating why are we deviating from the topic this is something which irritates right it might happen that i might have skipped any of the topics send a mail right i'll, I'll in any case i'm trying to cover it breaks the link and when when we are when you are learning one topic, why are you are thinking about any of the other topics? Why are you deviating? Right? There are millions of topics which are yet to be learned. So please focus. Okay. I really don't don't like to stop the chat in between. Right? That that so not not allowing you to speak. But please, because there has to be a discipline. Okay. Okay. So, corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum. So, these are, there are two things only to remember, right? Because say, when, when it will come to, when it will come in Vaivana, and then there, if you don't answer such questions, na, you will sweat like anything. You will sweat like anything. And, and when teacher will say, okay, you don't know even such basics, right? That is what really happens. So that's why I'm trying to put all the keywords. So to give complete focus. Even if you have got any question, send it in mail. Right? Right now, put a focus on this. Because yes, I can't complete full and final each and every word, each and every topic on this, every point on this earth for this particular topic. Not possible. Okay? So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum, only one thing you have to remember, only one thing, right? Corpus cavernosum, it is right and left, but it ends, it ends before gland span is, 
right this is this is this this conical expansion is called as the glans penis right that's the conical expansion so this is glans penis corpus cavernosum ends before glans penis right and corpus spongiosum it is only one and it is carried all the way till the end right so it is till glands pins right this is very very important point okay the next one see this is urethra right that one this one is urethra so urethra will be traveling all the way right there are arteries these are the deep artery of penis right deep arteries of penis they will be pumping the blood right so then when we will come to blood supply yes we'll be watching this blood supply in more detail right the cross penis that is what is having this corpus cavernosum right on both these sides and this is the muscle that is ischio cavernous these are the muscle ischio cavernous and finally the bulb of penis which is covered by bulbo spongiosus all these words they will come right bulbo span spongiosus ischio cavernosus these are all muscles they will become okay this makes things absolutely clear see corpus cavernosum yes it is ending just before glans penis right so done that's the urethra which is on the back side yes so all the way this is the bulb of the penis from there right that's the fixed part and rest of them is free so this is the fixed part which is also called as the root and this is the free part right this is the free part of the body and then there is intra bulbar fossa right there is a fossa like this right again it will come into urethra right urethra has got all the parts yes it will come but this is how we see that how actually through this passage everything would pass including the semen including the urine right that's the bulb and this thing is corpus spongiosum this will make your concept completely clear see it goes all the way till the end in a cross section there is a fossa there is a small fossa right this is a small fossa this fossa right so that's that space that is where it is bit enlarged so this is like a cross section okay when we take a transverse section right when you take a transverse section what you really see is that see there are veins these are the corpus corpus cavernosum right on both the sides and there is the corpus spongiosum right that is which is in the middle in between there is urethra then there is skin there is artery of bulb right there is a special artery but watch for these deep artery of penis these are the big arteries which will be responsible for the blood supply right rest is all fine deep fascia right superficial fascia and then these are the nerves there is another artery dorsal artery of penis which is on the back side and then these are the veins right so now you know the structure the structural architecture of it right okay it is at this point when we talk about the fascia right fascia we said that there is in abdomen we talked about superficial fascia and that is the superficial which was like fatty and deep was membranous but this over here it has got no fat that's that's the point in fact it is of loose areolar tissue these are like very soft tissues there are only few muscle fibers right there are few muscle fibers very few but important is this is in continuation with the fascia of abdomen and perineum right and 
over here in this fascia, what we will get is dorsal veins of penis. Right? So, there would be superficial dorsal veins of penis. So, this is superficial. When it comes to deep, yes, this deep is as you must have guessed, it is membranous, right? Because its responsibility is to give support. So, this is also called as the deep fascia or also called as the box fascia, right? This is also called as the box fascia. This is the deep fascia. Now, this deep fascia, that is where the erectile tissue is there, right? So, that is where the erectile tissues will be there. And when the erectile tissues are there, so then it is necessary that it should be having all those proper blood supply. So, it has got artery, it has got vein, it has got nerve, right? So, this is all dorsal artery, there is a dorsal vein and there would be dorsal nerve. Dorsal nerve. Right? Just for the veins, do remember that there is deep and superficial. So, here it would be deep, deep dorsal veins. Right? Why so? Because superficial dorsal veins, they are already into superficial fascia. Got it? So, here you have to be specific that for artery, dorsal artery, nerve, dorsal nerve, veins, deep dorsal vein because superficial, they are already into that superficial fascia. Right? So, when we said that it is this, that deep fascia, right, that deep fascia, it gives support, right, we, we, we saw that, that uh, when we, when we say that this is a pubic symphysis, right, and then there was like lower abdominal wall, right, and then from that, that entire suspensory ligament which was coming up, right, suspensory ligament of penis because over here for that support right for that support because from here let's say if the penis starts so this is this is what is called as the suspensory ligament right this is suspensory ligament of penis right this one and this is this is a deep support right this is a deep support and superficially, right, it is what is called as the fundiform ligament, right, superficial, this, this superficial, right, so that is what is called as the fundiform ligament. Basically, all are fascia, right, they are supporting, right, thickened fascia, so this is like a superficial support. Okay, so gland span is median raphe, ha, over here, the function is, let's say when the scrotum is formed, right, actually over here, the raphe means this, this is the formation, because it would be, it would be forming the overlapping borders, right, so that's how what's called as the raphe, this is called as a raphe, that is what forms. And then the anal canal, which is from that cloacal end, right? Now, see, regarding the regarding the arteries, we just distribute it in a very simple way, right? For the for the arteries, for the arteries, we divide it into one femoral artery, femoral artery. From femoral, there was, if you remember, superficial external pudendal. It was like superficial external pudendal artery, right? And this thing will give supply to skin and fascia, right? Just skin, skin and fascia of penis. But then comes the, so that is external pudendal, 
this is internal pudendal so when we were discussing lower limb at that point we actually avoided internal pudendal right if you remember we said that this is what we'll be discussing when it will come to pelvis so in how how this internal pudendal comes so it's like that aorta right that aorta it divides into common iliac common iliac would divide into external iliac and internal iliac and this internal pudendal and and this internal iliac right it will divide into anterior and posterior branch anterior and posterior branch right anterior internal pudendal is anterior branch of internal iliac artery right so anterior branch of internal iliac artery right and then this divides into few important arteries now see it is so systematic because it is actually just one artery right now divide it into to remember in three parts one deep artery uh, for artery i'll just write a of penis this is deep artery now this deep artery is absolutely vital because it is giving what's called as the helicine arteries helicine helical right they are going like this right they are called as the helicine arteries and they will be entering into corpora cavernosa now you know the importance of this artery right because when it will be going into corpora cavernosa right it will be going into that they will be responsible for actual erection right sorry So that is deep artery the second artery right it is dorsal artery of penis now name itself is telling that this is a dorsal artery right so it will be giving to almost the entire body so that is the glans penis then it will giving supply to prepuce frenulum right all those but important is corpus spongiosum right but in corpus spongiosum only the distal part because corpus spongiosum has got two parts one which was into the bulb right which was into the bulb and second which was into the entire body so for the bulb that is for the distal end right or for the proximal end right for the proximal end the bulb part the name of the artery itself is artery of bulb of penis so thus it has got three major arteries this is what is the actual blood supply of the penis right moving on to the veins veins are veins are pretty straightforward right they are like dorsal veins right and we saw that that there is superficial dorsal vein right there is superficial dorsal vein and this thing will drain into external pudendal vein right and then there is deep dorsal deep dorsal and this deep dorsal will take care of this corpora cavernosa right and that will drain into internal pudendal so technically speaking they just follow the arteries but 
this internal pudendal will lead to what's called as the prostatic plexus. There is a plexus which is near the prostate and this would be one of the topic when we'll be discussing prostate, right? So this is highlighted thing that this is slightly different as compared to others. Okay. Now, as you have seen this, right? This is the nerve supply. This is the nerve supply. As a medico, right? We know this part that there is a sensory and second is autonomic. Over here, autonomic comes into picture, right? So this is sensory for the sensations and this is autonomic. It is this autonomic which will be playing the vital role for the erection. So this is like let's divide into two parts. The sympathetic. Now sympathetic is what? Sympathetic S for S that is for stress. Whenever there is stress what happens? It leads to vasoconstriction. Over here we are dealing with when it comes to erection it is like it is vasodilation right so that's why it is parasympathetic it is parasympathetic it means that this is completely automatic phenomena right so over here they are the vasodilator people go in severe depression right that because of one or other stress yeah that leads to vasoconstriction and that leads to destruction of entire life right it is this parasympathetic that's the reason that this parasympathetic is so important right vasodilator this is s2 s3 s4 right this is the root and when it comes to sensory part right so there is we talked about this the dorsal now right dorsal nerve of penis we just talked about it right just talked about it and then there is one another important nerve right that nerve is ilioinguinal nerve and root value of ilioinguinal nerve was L1 right L1 that's the actual proper nerve supply right now when it comes to the process of erection right in that the entire mechanism as we said that it is it is the vascular as well as nervous right so it is a combination vascular it is fine but things start this is the parasympathetic system that's the reason that say you know one very interesting thing say putting putting it into slightly indecent language but there cannot be another word for it that's why i'm saying that when a female tells that yes he is good it requires intelligence on both the sides right we'll be discussing this point in extensive detail this is so so vital because it is like your brain power it plays a major role in, in the entire intimate process right so it is this parasympathetic system right where what leads to vasodilatation vasodilation or vasodilatation anything is okay right which would lead to right vasodilation that is the deep artery deep artery of penis now see what happens. This is this deep artery of penis, right? Which is entire branch of internal pudendal. Its branches are those helicine arteries, right? Ah, uh, no, at least another half an hour to 45 minutes. At least, minimum. So this is, this is helicine artery, right? These helicine arteries, they dilate, right? they dilate, they will spill the blood into corpora cavernosa, so that this corpora cavernosa is filled, right? 
वाजो डायलेशन डायलेट डायलेटेशन ऑफ वेसल्स राइट वेन द वेसल्स डायलेट राइट दैट इज दैट इज द फिनोमिना विच वी सॉ इट इन फिजियोलॉजी राइट पैरासिम्पैथेटिक राइट दैट इज वेन दीज वेसल्स दे डायलेट वेन पर्सन इज अंडर स्ट्रेस ऑब्वियसली ही वोट बी थिंकिंग अबाउट अ फीमेल और फीमेल वोट बी थिंकिंग अबाउट अ मेल राइट बिकॉज एट दैट पॉइंट सर्वाइवल इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट राइट दैट्स वाई इट इज कॉल एज द फाइट एंड फ्राइट सो ओवर हेयर when things when it is dilated it leads to filling up of corpus cavernosa now when that is filled right it will also lead to filling of corpora spongiosa which leads to enlargement of penis right and as the blood keeps on getting collected it leads to rigidity now at times it happens that people laugh right when you are teaching in class say this this is if you don't understand this it's like people cry after certain age seriously people cry after certain age when they don't know this mechanism because i'm about to tell you one another thing that is what exercise is so important and why it is vital so this much process is automatic right this much process is automatic but because we know that when there is artery where there are arteries there are veins also so immediately this blood would be drained out it should be prevented right then and then one can sustain and this is so important this is so important and for that what is needed is that those veins they should be pressed when the veins are pressed so they will prevent emptying prevent emptying this is a crucial thing right and how to do that this is where those ischio cavernous ischio cavernous and pubo coccygeus this is the vital muscle pubo coccygeus muscles they come into picture so if these muscles are powerful they actually do this second important part and this is what is the entire absolute process of mechanism of reduction right so that's the reason that these are there are some specific exercises why they are important why i was telling that kettlebell is so important yes see they are very scientifically designed right not this this explanation cannot be really given to every or every person but being a medico when you understand this and then when you do the exercise it will give amazing results that's what is is life life right okay the lymphatic drainage part right lymphatic drainage in lymphatic drainage just one important word one must know right the glands or the anterior portion right so that is drained by deep inguinal lymph nodes and there is a name which is given to that it is called as the gland of clocket C L O U Q U E T clocket, the gland of clocket, and for rest of the penis, right? For rest of the penis, it is simply drained by those superficial inguinal lymph nodes, inguinal nodes, or lymph nodes, right? Yeah, here is. that concept which we talked about as such we talked about it way back right when we were discussing all those muscles so this is the scrotum right the scrotum is having one important muscle and that is called as the dartos muscle you remember the name i said dartos muscle so that's the skin this is the second point dartos muscle dartos muscles importance temperature temperature regulation right this is the muscle which is for temperature regulation this is 
द मेजर रीजन वाई इन एक्सट्रीम टेम्परेचर द स्क्रोटम इधर श्रिंग्स और डायलेट्स राइट सो देर इज चेंज इन द साइज ऑफ द स्क्रोटम बिकॉज ऑफ द टेम्परेचर दिस इज बिकॉज डार्टोज मसल इज इन एक्शन राइट इट इज डूइंग जस्ट वन थिंग प्रोटेक्टिंग टेस्टिस एंड कीपिंग इट इन इट्स मोस्ट ऑप्टिमल टेम्परेचर फॉर द स्पर्मेटोजिनेसिस टू कंटिन्यू this is external spermatic fascia cremaster muscle and its fascia and internal spermatic fascia these fascias they are nothing but they are associated with respective muscles they are continuation so this external spermatic fascia that will come from external oblique right external oblique then say this cremastric muscle and fascia cremastric muscle and fascia right that will come from internal oblique internal oblique and internal spermatic fascia that is the fascia which is coming from fascia transversalis right fascia transversalis so that's these are some important keywords to know about to make things few things quickly this is like a nerve supply right and for the nerve supply this is pretty seedha sada right the division the area which is supplied by l1 that is the anterior portion ilioinguinal and genital branch of genitofemoral now because we have seen both of these nerves right they come straight away right ilioinguinal and the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve and the area supplied by s through this is the complete posterior so we'll be watching at a later stage when we'll be watching those scrotal and and the uh, say posterior scrotal nerves and the perineal branch of posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh these are for the posterior part right that's what is called as the ventral axial line dividing into l1 portion and the s3 portion taking few few small points bit fast right so that there is one important structure that is how how the sperms they form right the entire structure all those various names but if that is clear rest is all fine so regarding the blood supply of scrotum right blood supply of scrotum you need to understand either write down the word external or write down the word internal so for the external it is the external pudendal right external pudendal and thus it has got the say superficial branch and the deep branch right similarly there is internal pudendal internal pudendal right it would be having its scrotal branch because internal pudendal is vital it is going everywhere right so that is over here to scrotum it will be giving scrotal branch right and finally just plus this is inferior epigastric right inferior epigastric and for the cremastric muscle right it will give that cremastric branch just to know right but these two you must know external pudendal and the internal pudendal right now when we see the coverings right just a minute just a minute uh to see this thing right i would like to first show you because then you'll be able to appreciate hydrocel much better okay watch for this zoom right that's the area which is usually confusing see there is i'm marking one tunica vaginalis second tunica albuginea two right and so and third is tunica vascularis okay it is not written here doesn't matter doesn't matter that's okay just watch for watch for this see this tunica vaginalis right it has got two layers one is the parietal layer and second is the visceral layer 
right? So there is a visceral layer, there is a parietal layer, and the, sorry, huh. this is the parietal layer, this is the visceral layer, and in between, in between there is a, there is a cavity, right? There is a cavity, this cavity. When the fluid gets filled into this cavity, it is called as hydrocele, right? That's what is called as the hydrocele. So here it is, right? So let me draw, right? This and from internally, if we start, so first, right? It is called as the tunica. Tunica means covering right tunica means cover so first is vascularis vascularis it means the vessels would be there right then comes tunica albuginia 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 right that means white linea alba right almost the same the second layer and then there is tunica vaginalis this tunica vaginalis is divided into two parts. One is the visceral layer and second is the parietal layer. Parietal layer. Right? This visceral layer, obviously, it is near the organ. That's why it is visceral. And this is parietal, which is outer. It is this space. It is this space. That is where, if the fluid gets collected, it is called as the hydrocele. right hydrocele so that was that when the hernia also comes and then there is collection of fluid in between this visceral and the parietal layers so that is the combination this is what is called as the hydrocele and these are the various types of hydrocele where the names are given specific names right so this is hydrocele right and the first one, right, which is only only from here to here. This is called as the vaginalis part of vaginal type of hydrocele, right? Then when it is, this is the ring, right? That's a ring. So when it is like this, so this is called as infantile, infantile, right? When things are completely open, so all the way it is in connection with the pelvic cavity. So then it is called as the congenital. Congenital. And when it is just in between, so it is called as encysted. Right? Encysted. So this is what is called as the hydrocele and its various parts. Right? That is where that there is the peritoneal layer right peritoneum which will be studying it will be coming from the top and in that there is processus vaginalis right so that's an in it is parietal layer and the visceral layer that's where the fluid is collected now we move on to Just hang on for another 15-20 minutes, right? This is male gonad. This is similar to ovaries, ovaries in female. They are suspended into scrotum for the spermatic cord, right? Oval in shape and usually the weight is about 10 to 15 grams each, right? So these are the testes. But they are supported by, right? they are like this. That's spermatic cord. Spermatic cord. So when you do this section, actually when you pull the spermatic cord, yes, you will see the testis that is associated with it. Right? And testis, it descends, right? All the way from the top. So spermatic cord when it is attached this spermatic cord will be carrying right it will be carrying the 
the structures all those tubes which will be carrying the which will be carrying the sperms right so thus testis is here but it's upper pole upper pole right upper pole that is connected with the spermatic cord right it is the cord which will be carrying vessels which will be carrying every everything whatsoever is needed to supply and to get the things from testis right see so these are the parts now some of the parts i am highlighting red this one appendix appendix of testis and inferior aberrant ductules what are all those collectively just write them that they are embryonic embryonic remnants right they are embryonic remnants remnant means jo bach gaye wo right so they are embryonic remnants rest of the structure this is like lateral surface that's the anterior border this means that the epididymis is connected on the posterior aspect ductus deferens which will be carrying all the sperms this is like epididymis this is the body that is head this one is tail right lower pole so that's how a normal testis would really look like right now we take a section and this is the area for which i was waiting all all these structures must know see every structure say parietal and visceral layers of tunica vaginalis done you know this this is outermost right and this is parietal and this is visceral in between there would be there would be that hydrocele right if the fluid gets collected then comes tunica albuginea this tunica so we'll mark this thing as one this as two tunica albuginea because it is white and then internally this is tunica vascular vasculosa so that's internally right vasculosa that is from the vessels now this entire testis is divided into lobes right or we can call lobules right so these are the lobules they are divided there are septas right there are septas so this is one right this is one first point they are divided into lobules in every lobule right these are seminiferous tubules right seminiferous they are tortuous it is these seminiferous tubules which are responsible for formation of those sperms right they form sperms then these tubules they will come out of these lobule and see they are coming out right over here they are out so now they are called as the straight tubule right so they are called as the straight tubule so that's the third point then these straight tubules once again unite and they they form what's called as the reet testis right so that is number number 4 now from this point i take you to say rest of the structure sinus epididymis testicular artery pampiniform plexus pampiniform plexus uh, it's it's uh, a descriptive topic we'll see that but this start lobule seminiferous tubules straight tubule reet tubule reet testis and from reet testis where is reet testis over here here it is right that's the reet testis right this area that area right so that is reed testis so we give it say number 4 right so it is like we are just carrying that number so that is number 4 from that reed testis they are now forming what's called as the efferent ductules can you see just zoom see these are these are all reed testis and then here 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 they are all efferent efferent means exit right so that those sperms they are getting exited so this is like number 5 right from efferent ductules they all go into the epididymis so here is the epididymis so this is like number 6 from epididymis right it will start traveling head right 
and then it becomes coiled coil coiled coil and coiling increases and then it goes all the way right all the way it goes up and finally it lands into this duct it is now collectively called as the duct and it is called as the ductus deferens ductus deferens and this ductus deferens will go all the way up and here is the spermatic cord see here is the spermatic cord so spermatic cord is is consisting of this ductus deferens it is consisting of say vessels it is consisting of this means arteries veins all those things right that is that is the spermatic that is the spermatic cord right all good right then there are say these are the septas and then there are lobules all those things is what you saw okay so spermatic cord which is holding the entire testis <clears throat> the sinus that is the space right these are the appendix that is the embryonic remnant that's the testis and appendix and head of epididymis so epididymis is 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 like a transport system those testes which has created those pumps they will be carried by epididymis okay now this is like a wine bottle right its name is like that right its name is like that it is pampiniform plexus pampini means wine like right it's like a wine bottle pampiniform plexus wine I don't know where they find the wine in it, but anyway. Okay, so here the testis is there, right? From, it is drained by, right? There would be four vessels. There would be four veins. Four veins, right? So at superficial inguinal ring, there would be four veins. Then they will be passing through the in, this inguinal canal, <clears throat> and at the deep inguinal ring there would be two veins there would be two veins see so very systematically it is there on both the sides over there are four veins right and then at deep inguinal there are two veins and then as they go up there would be only one vein so this is on the right side it is right testicular vein on the left side <clears throat> on the left side it is it is left left testicular vein but there are they are one left testicular vein will drain in left renal vein and right testicular vein in will drain in in inferior vena cava <clears throat> important point to remember right so highlighting it highlighting it right do remember <clears throat> Now this entire plexus, right? It is as such divided into anterior, middle, and posterior part, right? All the way. So this anterior, middle, and posterior. Posterior is isolated. The posterior is isolated because this is like a plexus. And what about middle? You know the ductus deferens. You just saw, right? Those which are carrying the. So this entire plexus is surrounding that. It is surrounding that. So it is around, around ductus deferens. Ductus deferens. And what about anterior? Anterior is around testicular artery. <clears throat> so this is around testicular artery. Right? So that's how the entire, entire pampiniform plexus that is getting formed. Now, when we talk about arterial supply, right? Arterial supply. Pretty, pretty easy. Whosoever is near would supply, right? So, but in this case, we saw the abdominal aorta. And do you remember that image when all the way that vessel was going, that artery was going and all the way it was going and supplying deep? That was testicular artery how enthusiastic this artery must be testicular artery right all the gonadal artery starting at l2 level right then it used to go into the deep inguinal ring 
right deep inguinal ring then from deep inguinal ring going into that inguinal canal right and then it was entering into the spermatic cord right spermatic cord and then exiting via superficial inguinal ring and then going into the scrotum right and there it gives branches right it gives branches to supply the scrotum right and where it pierces that tunica albuginea right in fact testis right i should write not scrotum i should write testis that would be more correct let me correct it huh, testis because then we can define the layers so it pierces tunica vaginalis right it has to right it pierces tunica albuginea it has to because it will finally go into tunica vasculosa and there it will supply right so this is like a fantastic arterial supply for it right lymphatic drainage they all are near the aorta right so i'll just say lymphatic drainage they are all all pre that is pre aortic and the para aortic right that is in other words surrounding the aorta aortic lymph nodes lymph nodes right okay we go for a quick nerve supply in nerve supply it is this t10 right very important because when there is there is injury to the spine right this this level is important because otherwise if injury is they are above this so then these testicular sensations they are lost so this is t10 is for testicular sensation right sensations so they will be afferent those sensations would be carried right so that is what is called as the afferent efferent when the message comes from the brain right so and for the blood vessels right it would be for the blood vessels okay, okay dilate right so that is efferent right so that is afferent and an efferent okay right now see we we said that this say epididymis right epididymis right? all the way right that's all the way then going up 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 right then this was right this the so function of epididymis it is like reservoir just say it is a reservoir of sperms. We'll be talking about it right more. But do remember this important point. Right? That it is reservoir of reservoir of sperms. Now when we say descent of testis, right? When the testis descends, so these are these are the timings these are the timings say in third month right see how it has started it is over here this gubernaculum it is considered as a band which really pulls right gubernaculum fibrous tissue band which really pulls so right now it is into peritoneum then in seventh month it comes into inguinal canal right so over here it comes into inguinal canal it is necessary to know these things because in case if anything happens and if it stops in between there is a problem right so seventh month it is into inguinal canal so about say just to remember fourth to sixth month it will be into deep inguinal ring i think dir this should be fine right deep inguinal ring then in the eighth month right say it is continuing its descent and and that's how like say we see the epididymis this is the gubernaculum and it it has crossed even the superficial inguinal ring right or it is almost at superficial inguinal ring or it just it has just crossed it finally in the ninth month it finally lands into scrotum 
right and the see when when the it is going down right it is carrying even the peritoneal cavity with it see when it is going down see this part this is processus vaginalis it is even the peritoneal cavity is going down down with it and finally when it covers it it is getting sealed over here it is stopped this this is the closed part of processus vaginalis now the fluid cannot accumulate into that but if this remains open so then that fluid would trickle into it right that would lead to hydrosis because in that case it is cut and the whole thing is inverted so that there is never a collection okay there are several theories right several theories if we just take a minute on that right several theories that why the testis should descend one of the theory is like male hormones right male hormones they trigger the descent of testis then second is that there is differential growth right differential growth means differential growth means that abdomen it grows at a different pace pelvis diff grows at a different pace so because of difference this thing happens third thing what we saw that gubernaculum band right gubernaculum band and and as such when you when you try to dissect that where is gubernaculum you won't find it right it is some tissues there are some tissues which are acting as band and they are pulling it and there is one fourth it is like say intra abdominal temperature and the pressure which is leading to that descent of testes so these are all all major theories about that why it should happen right so finally last one minute is on that when when it travels right when it travels so this is abdominal right this is inguinal this is high scrotal they can stop even at this point also when they stop at this point it is what is called as the undescended descended testis right that testis has not descended and this is what is called as the cryptorchidism right cryptorchidism right so that is when the when these testes they have remained into abnormal positions yes it leads to all those complications and in the initial stage surgery is done and they are put back into the scrotum right and these are the areas that when it was in path it was in correct path what if if it is that is not the thing right for some reason they are at some incorrect location so this is one say it has gone into lower abdomen lower part of the abdomen and it has stayed over there only or two it is in front of thigh right it has gone to that level or it has gone into femoral canal right instead it should have gone into inguinal it uh, it went into femoral canal or in the fourth it enters though bit rare but in the skin of penis it has landed over there or in fifth part behind the scrotum right so that's the reason that when when the baby is born all these things they should be checked pretty properly right so that was for today right thank you so much right you guys are good descent in point descent means going down and how do i remember so many huge topics well there are so many right so you have to you have to go for proper proper revision kidneys so they they just go up right when when it come to kidney we'll talk about it and how does testis descend in a seventh month early pre 
No, no, it is like even if it is premature, but the process it keeps on continuing and whatever the corrections which are to be done, they are done. Right. All right. So, any of the query, do send a mail to me. Right. I'll, I'll reply to that. Thank you so much. Take care and we meet tomorrow. Bye-bye.